What if I told you guys that the delightful and colorful world of Pikmin was actually a dark, scary world with evil and capitalism and such? Would that not pique your interests? Uh, you like Kirby? That yes! Oh! <laughs> <laughs> All right, that'll, that'll work. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, we already did this thing with Kirby, right? We we did. It's like, oh, it's a Nintendo game, but it's dark. But it's not a very... He's the eater of worlds. Yeah, it's not a very Whatever. unique trope amongst the lores, <laughs> quite honestly. Look at the super cute thing, but it's actually incredibly dark. Yeah, is that... Was that... Did you like the like what was it the woodland friends or whatever where they're like happy tree friends yeah where they're like cartoon oh, yeah. animals but they they kill each other was did and that blood and did that not and... did that not make you lull Fran with delight? are you not entertained <laughs> did you did I you, was not entertained did but you right. <laughs> not lamau with with pleasure please you um, can't with... you can't do that on this episode CJ. You can't do that <laughs> thing you've been doing where you just say Lamau out yeah, loud. Yeah, I know. I can't. I lost, you the, can. I lost no. the ability to laugh. <laughs> and so lately I've just been saying the word Lamau instead. So it's good. I think it's an upgrade from when you would say, that is a funny joke. <laughs> I yeah, liked That's it. I liked when I just said that is a funny joke. Yeah, I, mean, uh, I think Lamau is a good throwback to 2002 when I'm, Hot Topic had happy tree friends everywhere. So I think it's fine. So you cool. do know about them. All right. <laughs> I'm aware of them, but yeah. So welcome to the Lore You Know, a podcast where we're not talking about Happy Tree Friends this time. It's actually about Pikmin. And here to bring you the mostly correct facts about made-up things this week are me, Fran. Me, Ethan. And I'm CJ. I'm the red one. Ethan's the blue one. And oh, wait, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think that went all that the way was through. unintentional. <laughs> You wanted, would you I like to start I again? Didn't, I didn't pick the colors of Would you that. like so to CJ's start again, buddy? Game. Fine, I'll um, be the yellow one. Fran can be the blue one, the safest one, and then Ethan will be the yellow one. <laughs> All right, there's, I mean, there's a lot more Pikmin too. That are, those are our original three, but you could have picked any. Fran uh, could be the winged pink one, the well, only girl-coated one. Ones? That one's, oh, of course. That yeah. one's too scary for me. It has like haunting eyes. Um, <laughs> Today, we are going to talk about the Pikmin series. Uh, I believe we're just going to go through one through three because we don't want to we don't want to give you any spoilers for that brand new game that just came out. What we are trying to uh, ride the algorithm with. Um, but <laughs> I I liked what I played with Pikmin. Me and Ethan played it on the channel. We did a little let's play of it, a little cooperative play. Um, I think it's great, but if you look beneath the surface, as all of the YouTube think pieces will have you believe, <laughs> that it is actually a very dark and scary world. And Fran, you know that, you know, there's a fungus that takes control of ants' brains and makes yes. them walk up on high things and explode. Like Zombos, yeah. Well, that's yeah. what if that was that's a thing. That's what Pikmin is. Well, well, you know, Fran, we'll get into it, but... Uh, wait, wait, did well, Olimar infect the Pikmin with a fungus yeah. to control them and mm, no, lead them to their no, deaths and get eaten by large creatures? Fran, you're <laughs> thinking too far ahead and also in the wrong direction, so let's oh. let's reel it <laughs> so in. So Olimar Just... is not evil. No, uh, no, as, Louis, not no Louis such. is evil. Oh, uh, no, um, Ethan, you ruined it. The reveal. Uh, <laughs> there's, like, from moment one... <laughs> he's he's a he's just selfish. He's a selfish glutton, and if that's evil, then <laughs> he, wait, well, if I'll, the what, seven I'll, deadly I'll, sins have taught me anything from Full Metal yeah, Alchemist, that is evil. Uh -huh. gluttony is a sin. He, Therefore, yeah, he does. He does also command the big cannon dweevil to try mm -hmm. and kill you. But and that that's that could just that's, be his subconscious. That could just. Is is what we think in our subconscious make us evil? Because then if there, is, there is cute aggression 
too. Like if you think mm -hmm. something's so cute, you just want to. I know. I it. get that. I want right? to. Right. I want to. Yeah. So it could just be a form of affection. Do you really. ever see those little owls, like those owlets, and they're just mm -hmm. is there, this, this and is you just want to, you just want to like messed up, <laughs> like just. <laughs> Well, they're owls, so that would just, they would right. just turn well, their yeah. head. If, if anything, that would be the best thing to do that to. All right. Okay. We're getting, we're getting nowhere, so I'm just gonna, I'm gonna lay it we're out. We're trying to, we're trying to make it lighter, Ethan. Our last one is about nuclear armament. Wait, you just made it lighter with talking about snapping baby owl necks. Yeah. But well, as we determined, their owl yeah. necks wouldn't be snapped. It would just so rotate. Yeah. It, it yeah, would be totally like, fine. it would it's be. It's like going to the chiropractor for the owl. Right. It would be like the, you know, the it's little, really like. really realigning that spine. The, like, hand toys, so you, the fidgets and stuff. Like, that would be a good one. Just a little owl that you, like, turn back and forth. <laughs> we do just, not condone owl violence a little bit too hard <laughs> uh, <laughs> we're gonna try something a little bit different this time because there's not a whole lot of official pikmin lore but there's a lot of like theory stuff out there and i'm gonna throw out my own theory cj we're gonna do a little bit of stepping on matt pat's toes game theory well that's that's when you get sued but I would say I I like to keep it in the realm of canon, but we did get a little dark last time, so we'll go a little silly this time. And also, I I reviewed a lot of the stuff like the they don't just say things. If you're looking for like the creators to be like this is how it is, they don't do that. But there's enough in there where you can everyone on the internet like hedges. They're like this is a probable theory. It's like the <laughs> game pretty much tells you this is what's going on. You can just because they don't say it outright doesn't mean you can't infer with your human brain. So let's do a little oh. inference. All right. Yeah, we'll see how this goes with the the lore you maybe think. Mm, the lore you believe in. <laughs> it just doesn't work as well as a pun, but that's yeah, it's not quite as good. All right, well, we'll start with the lore you know instead. I like that. So starting in Pikmin 1, we have our main character, Captain Olimar. He mm -hmm. is from a, uh, he's from a different planet. He's from planet Hakotate, and they are a space-faring people. And so he's just kind of cruising around in his cute little spaceship when he comes a little bit too close to this uncharted planet PNF 404, which mm -hmm. looks like very suspiciously blue with like little green continents on it and such. It, mm. it, it, so again, this is the part where people are like, it could be Earth, and you can like get, <laughs> you can like see a picture of it, and it just is Earth. It's like in anime when you you see the moon in the sky, and it just is the Earth moon, and you're like, oh, I guess we're on Earth. So that's cool. Uh, what if there's two holes punched in it? Then, well, then we're you know, in, which a, anime you're in yeah. Then we're in that tells us then, which anime to oh, okay. to adjust our thoughts to. But it could be multiple. The ship's name, Fran, is the Dolphin. Do you know why? The Dolphin. But he just said his PNF. Wait, no, no, that's no the, PNF that's the planet. Planet. was the world. Come Sorry. On. Yeah, no, wake up, Fran. Why is it a Dolphin, CJ? Because that was the name of the Nintendo GameCube before it was given the name oh. of the Nintendo GameCube. This was, mm, that was this, its project development. This was one of the projects I think that was in development before the GameCube actually released. It was it wasn't mm. a launch title, but it was being developed before the GameCube that had, sounds right. had yeah, a, like this, a mainstream. It was this, one of the first like original series on the GameCube, right? Yes. It yeah, it was very again, not a release, but very early. And this was actually a game that came about because Shigeru was like looking at the capabilities of the GameCube versus the N64, and he's like, I could have actually hundreds of tiny little dudes on the screen at once, yeah. and it would Make work. It and it would and it would be very silly. Ha ha ha. Um, so the, the dolphin is, uh, it's got a bunch of high-tech spacefaring equipment on it. It is like a super futuristic spaceship, um, but as we discover as it crashes down on PNF 404, uh, it is about the size of like a tall boy, like a can, 
Uh, so okay. it is. It is very small. It's not very big. So it, when yeah. it was hit by an asteroid in space, it was like a. It was like a pebble, like a space pebble. Mm-hmm. Mm. Yes. There's a lot of. There's going to be a lot of debris up there in our orbit. Yeah, and we we know this because. Uh, famously, there's just a Duracell double A battery that exists that you can just see on the ground, and it's about four times taller than Olimar. So we can use tiny, we can super use, small. Yes, the 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 what are the hopolites or the uh no he's a he's oh the he, hockatates yeah the hockatates are are very small beings. Mm. Compared yes. to us, it's impressive for he, him to travel so far. Then it would be yeah, easier. Well, <laughs> like, like, the I mean, bigger you are, the harder it is to make a spaceship that goes get, really far. If you're if you're traveling around at light speed or faster, I don't think it matters too much if you are an inch tall or ten feet tall. Yeah, I think uh, it does. I feel like if you're traveling around at the speed of light, <laughs> I don't, uh, and being ten feet tall. I can't I mean, get into the, I energy can, I intensive. I, I can't get into the physics of it, but it's energy wise <laughs> easier. But also, your energy source is smaller. But doesn't matter because it's fun. It's a cartoon, okay, right? Sorry. Yeah. So I guess we'll we'll get into official size then. Yeah. Officially, Olimar is just over an inch tall, but that includes the antennae on his spacesuit. Aww. So. He is a teeny tiny little guy. He's so small. <laughs> yeah. He's very small. He's an and, alien. And as CJ said, uh, his his spaceship gets hit by a little meteor and crash lands onto PNF 404. Which and isn't so, right. It isn't called that yet, but it will be in the yeah. second or third game. Third. I don't remember. The third yeah, game. It's fine. They just call it Pikmin Planet for now. As yeah. for reasons we will show you, because there's Pikmin yeah. on it. Assuming there's Pikmin, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, I mean there's it's called like distant planet, Pikmin planet, unknown planet, blah blah. There's a bunch of them, and then they were finally just like, let's let's just give it an actual title. Mm -hmm. And it was PNF 404. Ethan, um, why why is Olimar flying around? Is he some sort of space explorer? Uh yeah, so they I don't think they land that in the first game yet, but we find out later that he works for a space freight uh company. Oh. Yeah. So it's also, all about shipping. He's not working when he's doing this either. He's on vacation. He's just yeah. flying he's just flying around in his little spaceship. Getting yeah, away no, they, getting away from the wife and kids. The the <laughs> my dang wife and son. They are I mean, he talks all the time about how much he loves them, but it's not true. enough to go on vacation with them. Right. Well, it, I guess well, it was... It sounds like his vacation was dangerous. Yeah, it was dangerous. So... He also has a daughter. <laughs> Olimar's flying around for his vacation, having a grand old time. Smack crash lands on an alien planet, and his ship is destroyed, Fran. It will no longer sustain flight or life. Yes, so uh, Olimar's... But then he has a spacesuit? Yes. So on? The, uh, the spacesuit gives him... Uh, he's got life support another 30 days, but after that, the systems won't hold up anymore, and he can't repair his spaceship because the pieces went flying all over mm. the area, and he's just a oh, little guy. No. He's just a little How guy. How does he get all the things? Uh, specifically, oxygen is poisonous to him, and he says there's a lot of oh. oxygen on the planet, so hmm. I... Yeah, yes, he would. How does he feel about nitrogen gas? Because there's a lot of that, too. Well, it doesn't Unclear. really matter. It doesn't... It's not that... <laughs> So, like, for us, <laughs> nitrogen is bad to breathe because we need oxygen, but it's not poisonous to breathe it, as opposed to if it was poisonous to breathe oxygen for you, even if there was stuff you can breathe, it doesn't matter because you're being poisoned. I feel like he just needs a filter. It'd be fine. Uh, well, his filter only lasts him 30 days. Oh, okay. All right. All right. Uh, uh, so, you, he's... Reminder, change your HVAC filters, people. Yeah, for all you homeowners out there that are listening to this, right? There are apartments that wait, you have to change wait, the filters to. We do, we do literally know, um, I think, two homeowners who are listening to this. Great. Uh, change your ASVAC filter, I guess. <laughs> okay. All right, Pikmin, where was I? So <laughs> all of ours looking like- He just like crash landed. That's as far as we've gotten. Yeah, yeah, we're doing really good. So, so good. So Olimar, he's he's looking like he's in a tough spot, but 
he's a little bit of a exploration minded dude and he starts to look around his crash landing area and he sees this weird giant onion looking thing and oh. as he comes towards it it splorps out of the ground and a bunch of tripod legs come out oh. and it spits out a little seed okay this little seed would it immediately grows into this red plant it's just got a, a cute a single leaf like waving in the wind mm. there and it mm -hmm. just looks like it's begging to be plucked okay don't does he say think that. how far can i throw this then well he's got to pluck it first which he does okay. fran and guess what comes out of the ground it's a little is it a pikmin it's a little guy a little red guy a little boy so when alamar plucks the pikmin out of the ground for some reason it like imprints on him and so now he just follows around Olimar and does whatever he tells him to. I guess that's just their natural state of being. Okay. Yeah, so they they do, yeah, they follow Olimar around. It's worth noting that Olimar in his spacesuit like vaguely looks like a Pikmin because they're the same size and the antennae that comes off the top of his spacesuit is like very similar to their little like leaf antennae. Mm. But yeah, so they they start in on this adorable little symbiotic relationship uh, because currently on the world, the Pikmin are the bottom of the food chain. And they're it, very tiny. They're very tiny and they panic easily and they're not they're not very good at surviving. They, so they drown them, feel that. They drown <laughs> themselves even though they know they can't swim. Oh. <laughs> Stuff they like, are. you know, I know the regular. I'm enough to avoid that, usually. The games have gotten easier over the years, like, in part because the new tools they give you, but also in part just because the, like, Pikmin AI has improved to the point where they don't regularly kill themselves while right next to you. Well, that sounds like they're just toddlers at that point, then. I mean, Pretty they, similar. They, Actively trying to find they, all the ways to possibly harm themselves. Th they were just born, so... Yeah. Like, yeah, literally just born and imprint on Olimar. But they started on this little symbiotic relationship. Well, Olimar helps them survive and uh, up their numbers, gather more food, and keep growing more Pikmin. And the oh. Pikmin provide him the manpower he needs to find and collect all the parts of his ship. Oh, that's nice of them. He decides to name them Pikmin because his favorite food is a food made of onions and carrots. And on his home okay. planet, they call carrots Pick Pick Carrots. And it's the uh, most popular brand, I think. And ah, and capitalism. these Pikmin look like those carrots, so he okay. calls them a portmanteau Pick -pick. of Pick Pick and Man, which is. Pikman. Well, Pikmin. Oh, uh, that's plural. Well, I guess. Yeah, it's, oh. all, it's all of them, I, I guess. I'm a, oh, okay. I am but a Pikman. They come in different varieties, Fran. This is the this is another part they don't talk about, but on his home planet, the carrots are literally red, yellow, and blue. So it is like huh. a one to one. Like it, just, it looks exactly like them. So he's At like, At what oh. point? Do you start wondering that you've been eating sentient beings as carrots? Well, when you pick then. those carrots on his home planet, they don't ambulate. They don't start moving around <laughs> on yeah, you. Presumably. Don't, I don't think they sing. Presumably. Um, and also the onions don't fly into space in his home planet either, but the onions here do do that. Uh, mm. one, one important thing to note is that during the day, it's... Not safe, but it's like he's relatively able to maneuver around and gather things. But at nighttime, all of the hungry creatures come out. And so he and all the Pikmin that he has gathered over the course of his adventure have to hide away inside of his ship and in the uh, in the onion in order to uh, they, they fly up into the air. Uh, the first the first day that you're there, you get your engine back which allows the spaceship oh. to fly a little bit. Uh, so oh. although he can't take off from the planet or make more air that he can breathe, uh, he can, uh, at the very least, get up above into the sky every night 
And, okay, uh, and that's convenient. For some reason, the onion that generates the Pikmin also can fly, so it just follows him up into the air as well. Yeah, I yeah. mean, it's because so many of the creatures that eat Pikmin are nocturnal, so yeah. they, they escape Hence into the sky. Hence why the onion can fly. Yeah. yeah, they escape into the sky at night so that they don't get eat up. The, mm. the onion is... Uh, it's it's also the thing that generates the Pikmin. You feed it biological material. I, I mean, guess. yeah, any any <laughs> organic material. Fla- and then just kind of flowers, out little flowers, little or usually dead things that they killed, and it absorbs their essence and deconstructs them. And it, that's a wild and, onion. And then it gen- <laughs> it generates additional Pikmin. And so that hmm. that is how you grow your Pikmin army is by killing and dismembering other animals, <laughs> and then uh, feeding it to the one onion god, and then well, friend, I mean, <laughs> there's actually that's... three onions because oh. each onion make a different color Pikmin. You see, oh, and there are three colors of Pikmin, each with with a slightly different facial feature. I thought they just had different little flowers and stuff. No, not true, Fran. The flowers represent... So the Pikmin can grow stronger over time by drinking sap. And so if you have a Pikmin that's just a leaf head, then it uh-huh. is. Then they are, they are rookie level. They're just babies. But if they, drink, okay. if they drink some sap, they will get a little, like, unbloomed little bulb yeah, on their yeah. head. Um, okay. And then, if they drink more sap, they will uh. bloom into a whole flower. Uh, okay. Uh, the did they get they get stronger then? They get faster and stronger, I think. Okay. Um, but uh, but apart from that, they're also three different colors. There's the red, the blue, and the yellow Pikmin. Can you guess what each of them is unique with? What powers? One has what powers? One do can they do have? heavy lifting. Nope. I presume. Nope. nope. Okay. One one is explosive. Yeah, kinda. One. <laughs> yeah, you throw it, it kind of like goes. Poof. One one can pick up explosives. Okay. That, One's the demolition expert. Which one? Right. Which one do you think that is, Fran? The red one. You're so wrong, Fran. It was the yellow one okay. all along. Dang it! Did um, the yellow ones have ears? Does that help? Did that, the yellow ones have ears? Does yeah, that so, help so connect they, it for you? So when they explode what? things, it fucking blows out their eardrums. <laughs> they really want to hear the explosion. Yeah, the yellow in their souls. The yellow ones are resistant to electricity and can throw explosives. Okay. The and red, are the lightest. And are the lightest. Oh. Whatever. The the red one Are wa- blue the heaviest? No. 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 We no. That okay. it doesn't really come into play. I don't play. know then. Uh, oh, that's just the fact that the yellow is the lightest. Well, that's it. the blue ones can survive underwater, Fran. Oh, I thought you just said that they drown themselves. Yes, the red and the yellow ones do, but the blue oh, ones cannot. Oh, the blue drown. ones are fine. Yeah, blue ones are fine. They have what looks like a mouth, but is actually just a gill on the front of their face. <sighs> and it's a little disconcerting. <laughs> and the first one and the cutest one is the red one, and he mm. is resistant to fire. He can't be set on that's fire. Cool. Uh, and he's got a he's got a long pointy nose. So there's one with ears, one with nose, and one with mouth. But none of them okay. have all three, or even two of the three. They all have eyeballs, though. Okay. Do you understand now, Fram? You're making a little. You're no evil. Smell no evil. Yeah, I also thought no it was evil. a reference to that, but the yeah, this the nose one <laughs> throws it off. But throws you off a little bit. But you can't wear glasses without a nose, so. And you need glasses to yep, see. Yeah, that's probably so what they meant. That's, that's probably prob- that's, that's probably really good, what they CJ. Meant. Yeah, isn't it weird? You need a nose and ears for glasses, which don't help either of those things. That's kind of wild. That's anyway. why you can just wear a monocle. I guess if you want to do this all the time. Yeah. <laughs> if you don't have a nose or ears, that's kind of your only option. That's a good point, Fran. Uh, but those are those are our little boys. Uh, as Ethan said, you help to breed them i guess uh create more of them and then when you when the onion turns them into a seed and you pluck them they all imprint on you in the same way so they just follow you around and eventually you've got a an army of little guys helping you to try and repair your broken spaceship sounds great 
then presumably you're the course wrong, the Fran. Game, you it sounds <laughs> stressful. <laughs> it sounds like you've only got 30 in-game days to fix your ship or you will die here. How many parts went flying? Is it 30 parts? It is or... 30 parts. But as you okay. discover through the course of collecting the parts, you don't need all of them to get off the planet. Because like... You know how you know how in spaceships they always like put extra things on there that you don't really need to function. like the appendix. Yeah, well, there's I think one of them is like a flotation ring, and he's like, I don't really need the flotation ring because I'm a pretty good swimmer, but I better get it just to be safe. One of them is his uh, seat, which is just a cushion, which probably <laughs> doesn't need that. I um, don't need the cushion, but we don't know how far he's traveling. The final Might need the lumbar support. The final thing that you collect is not a spaceship part at all. It is actually a piggy bank that is filled with valuables. And oh, he's uh he's like oh thank God I got this back because it has my life savings that I carry with me at all times. So <laughs> maybe should have left it back home with the wife and children. But all right, we'll just well, carry they would it with just us on my spend spaceship. Spend it all, Fran. You know how the you know how the family can be. Constantly buying things mm. like food and televisions and such. That is, that, that's more or less the uh, the plot of the first game. Um, so one thing I'm confused about in the game is the gameplay part. Sure. Of like, you get all, you get these Pikmin and you get a trail of them, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. How do you change? Can you change the order of them? You can, or do they just kind of show up in order, and you just got to deal with it strategically? So there before adding to no, the stress. No, no, you have a whistle, Fran, and Pikmin are very receptive to the whistle that is built into your, <laughs> to your fucking space shoot for some reason. But uh, you can use the whistle to like summon all the Pikmin around you so that they'll all follow you. Uh, you can use the whistle to have them like group up into their color appropriate groups and then they'll kind of all mm. follow you around in that way um and when you actually throw a pikmin you can select what color pikmin you're trying to throw oh, okay so you just pick well, that makes it a little easier you just pick the pool that you're throwing from so like mm -hmm. you use you use your whistle to gather them all up you can use the kind of like sort into different piles to have them just like line up and then you can use mm -hmm. your whistle to just like select the color pikmin that you want so like if you're going underwater, you just bring your blue guys with you because everyone else will just drown anyway. Yeah. And then at the maybe not throw the red and yellow ones in there. And then at the beginning and end of each day, at the end of each day, you need to collect up all your guys and bring them back to the onion. Otherwise, they will get eaten mm. in the middle of the night. And okay. So if you abandon them in the middle of the field, yes, they will. That's a problem. They will perish overnight. Okay. Uh, so the number of Pikmin you have carry over to the next yes, day. Yes. And you can get okay. the onion can store the onions can store any unused Pikmin as well. So you can get a vast surplus of Pikmin you need. Um mm -hmm. and then at the beginning of each day you can select how many of each Pikmin you want. So like if you're just gonna go do Hi. water stuff, you just bring a bunch of blue Pikmin. Um and if something happens to all of your one kinds of Pikmin, you can use your other kinds of Pikmin to like go get more resources to, you know, refuel mm. that one. So when Olimar gets the ship back together and presumably lifts off, where mm. does he go next? Does he bring all his Pikmin friends with him or is he just like leaving no, them there? No, friend, that's not, that's oh. not really what he's about. <laughs> uh, well, the onion can't travel in space. It just flies up into the air every night to keep the Pikmin safe. Uh, okay. the, I think the general idea is Olimar's not really like a sciencey guy. He keeps like a spaceman's journal because no, he's he's a he's a more sciencey boy. He's like he's a sciencey shipping guy. He describes himself as like a a green thumb kind of guy. Like he likes the plant life and stuff. And he describes it. Horticulturist. But he like, when he's like putting a spaceship back together, he's like, I don't really know what these things do. I just know that you need to put it in the spaceship to get it to work <laughs> right. So he. Yeah, he, he primarily, uh, he does have an interest in biology. Yeah. Uh, so he like in the, the second game, they will add in the Piclopedia. Mm -hmm. And for every creature in it, he gives them uh, his suspected family tree and their uh you know biological traits and that kind of stuff 
and he that's fun yeah and and so he's like he like cares for the creatures enough to like want to not see them get eaten but he also seems to be pretty like eh, I mean, if they do that's just it's that's, the way of life that's just nature baby um so i think the idea is like at the end of the game he's like well little pikmin i've taught you to survive on your own i'm i'm sure you'll be fine now probably anyway i'm gonna go home uh oh, and so he does okay. so you don't bring any pikmin with you or anything they mm. just they just live on just continue existing. They just live on Earth, yeah. Um, mm -hmm. there's there's actually three endings. Uh, that's the the canon good ending is if you get all the ship parts and you leave the planet and everything's good. Um, there's if you don't get all your ship parts, do you die? What? Well, Fran, is that one of them? Uh, yeah. So oh shit. The um the. Like you said, there's like some ship parts you just don't need to to have your ship take off. So if you don't get all the ship parts, but you still get enough to like make your ship fly, that still is fine. You still fly and presumably fly home. Um, but then there is the bad ending where you try to, Olimar gets in a ship and tries to fly away, but it comes crashing back down and explodes. And Olimar is carried like Jesus getting taken off the cross by all the pikmin and they put him into the onion and then the oh. the onion shoots out an alamar seed that gets stuck into the ground and now alamar is a, a pikmin uh yeah he's he's i forget what Wild. people call him i think they just call him uh, alamin all up yeah all they would call him something like that back in the day but now they would probably call him a leafling Oh, Pikmin. Leafling. Oh my yes. God, it's foreshadowing well, you... for later, Fran. But don't don't worry about it. In the bad ending, the Pikmin carry you like their Messiah into the <laughs> into the onion to be reborn as a new creature. All right, never to see his family again. No, but you know whatever they. It's that or it's that or die. So it's... just be dead. Right. So you know, I guess that's up to you. So all of the all of the like items in the game are like all the lore that we're getting from the game is from a couple sources but the main source is like Olimar keeps a journal on all the things so like whenever he picks up a thing or collects it he'll like describe it um and yeah, and like a pokedex yeah uh and so that's like ethan said is is a little more codified in the next game with the picopedia or the Pickyopedia or whatever he said it was. Picklopedia. Picklopedia. Uh, but there's also like, there's other adventurers that will have their own logs as we'll get to, but there's also oh. the ship itself will like come up with computer logs of things. So all of the lore, this was way before Dark Souls had all the lore getting told in item descriptions. <laughs> But this this game, you you get all the lore via uh, environmental storytelling and and item logs. So is Dark Souls a Pikmin like? Is Dark Souls the Pikmin <laughs> of Dark Souls games? Uh, but yeah, we're in the good ending. You the Pikmin help you put your ship together, and you get to fly back home and see your wife and kids again. Game over. With your life savings, hopefully. With your life savings. That's the good ending. The average ending is you don't have your life savings with you. Mm. But that's Rough. that's not canon, so it doesn't matter. So Olimar gets to go home with his vast riches. Uh, and as he returns home to Hopotite. Hakotate. I'm bad at Hakotate. Hakotate. Uh, he checks in with his boss for the company that he works for, which is Hakotite freight and he is uh tell like, hey man i kind of blew up one of the ships no the ship's fine Don't now he right, fixed it, it yeah i fixed it, it though it's, yeah yeah it does Don't seem, worry about it. it does seem as though although alomar really likes his ship the dolphin it does seem as though it's a company ship and not his own um but he's telling his boss about this this crazy new planet that he discovered that has all these pikmin on it and he's like yeah yeah, yeah that's great but while you were gone alomar our company has accru accrued massive debt like we're we're mm. crazy in debt because we agreed to ship 
these rare and valuable golden pick pick vegetables uh mm. and uh and that shipment has gone awry as we discovered uh was it Louis mhm mm Louis was in charge of delivering those uh and he said that a ravenous space rabbit ate all of them and oh and so now the company's on the line for <laughs> for a bunch of <laughs> coins i think is their currency we we so you better insure... recovered your piggy bank. Yeah, we're a freight so we company. We that. don't insure anything. So <laughs> now, now they're on the line for ten. Get stuck in a canal. They're they're, fucked. they're on the line for ten thousand and one hundred gold coins, and uh, and Alamar's boss is like, and we sold the dolphin because we we need to put up some. Put up put up some. I guess it's impounded or whatever. But he's like. <laughs> yeah. He's like, we sold the dolphin and we're in massive debt and the company's ruined. And Olimar's was like, ah, well, shit, dude. Jeez. I really like the dolphin. It's my favorite ship. Um, and I think what happens is the shock of this makes him drop a bottle cap he was carrying. The bottle cap was supposed mm. to be a souvenir for his, uh, for his son. son. Um, and as he drops the bottle cap and it... Uh, rolls over to a new new spaceship uh, that has been equipped with a value detecting like AI. device. Yeah, I don't, I don't know exactly, but it gets so in the first game when you repair the ship, there's like a big nozzle, and when you put the ship part up to the nozzle, it just kind of sucks it into the ship and then repairs the ship for you. This sh nice. this ship is equipped with a eerily similar device, but instead of fixing the ship, this one just absorbs treasures and tells you how much they're worth. Uh, and so yeah. the ship does this and determines that this bottle cap is worth 100 smackaroons. And so Ooh. and so the debt goes down from 10,100 to just around 10,000. <laughs> and upon seeing this, the president of the company goes, oh, Olimar, you can go back to that planet using this other ship that we have that I guess turns turns impound. turns treasure into currency and <laughs> you can go back to the planet and get a bunch of treasure and that will solve our money problem and also you can take Louie with you because this game is is you have two people that you control in this one so okay so uh, sounds uh, like Louie's going to sabotage things based on what <laughs> Well, Louis I mean, no, told it's, me earlier. Louis <laughs> Louis a fuck up for sure and is a dick. Um so I mentioned that like all of the uh all the like lore you get is through Olimar like charting things like space captain and, and like you, you know noting down his adventures. Uh Louis that you can also like read Louis's description on everything and it's just like a cookbook on how to eat it. So like he's oh, no. he literally is just going around <laughs> oh. eating everything and describing how it tastes, which mm -hmm. oh he so in case you haven't figured it out he including the Pikmin he ate all of the golden pick pick vegetables that he was supposed to deliver. Oh. There is no ravenous space rabbit, Fran. That was a lie. He was Ex the ravenous space rabbit. <laughs> exactly, uh. Fran. We learned this over the course of the game, but I'll tell mm. you now so you can know what a little bastard he is. <laughs> <laughs> He did. So he's a glutton. Mm -hmm. He's greedy. He's kind of stupid. Yeah. He's, um. Yes, he is the main villain of the series. Uh, uh, the whole series. Yeah. Yes. He he is reoccurring uh, as is Olimar. Um. But Fran, do you do you like their names? You play as Olimar and Louis in this one. Ollie and Louis. I'm Ol not sure. Olimar and Olimar and Louis. Do you like those names, Fran? N not particularly. I have no. Friends, like, friends, uh, friends trying to figure out what <laughs> trap you're trying to put her into. Yeah. So, I'm not like super attached to them or anything. I wouldn't name my child either of those names. So what? What if I? What if I left the L in Louis's name, but I took it out of Olimar's name? Olimar. He and is Louis. 
It is Olimar is uh, an Olimar. anagram for Mario with the L oh, added, oh, and God, Louis gotcha. is just without the G on the end. He is Luigi. That's a stretch. I'm Lu- a be what honest Luigi? No, that, uh, yeah, this was, yeah, that was Louis, less Luigi, of a stretch. No. <laughs> it's, Those aren't spelled remotely the it's, same. No, I it's like it's like in it's like in Kingdom Hearts where. <laughs> <laughs> when you become when you, you become evil and they scramble up your name and put an X in it. It's like that, but Olimar is Mario, but he's part of organization L. I don't think Olimar is the Roxas to Mario's Sora. Well, I don't now think I'm going to have to remove we, but, that fan theory. We, we, we know, we, that's because we only know it from the Pikmin side of things. We'll... we'll <laughs> Never do Kingdom Hearts, but if we did, yeah. that's what we would so learn. Put please put on um I was gonna say Twitter, but put on X uh some <laughs> The heartless some, version of no, Twitter. Some fan art of Mario with a uh with a key sword. Do, please. do you think do you think that's <laughs> Do you think that's what Musk did? He was like he played like half of Kingdom Hearts where they but like Kingdom Hearts two where they just put the X in the name. But then he didn't do all the other parts where he scrambled it up, so he's like, Wow Well, he was like, This game is perfect. All these names have X's. I in love them. that. I mean probably he's like I that. love that shit. He's he's like, I I'm gonna do that to my own name. I will now be cum <laughs> Great. It was fantastic. <laughs> Don't give him any more ideas. Uh, he has so few to choose from. Um, so, so yeah, uh, that that's the plot of the second game. Is that Olimar and Louis return to the planet? It's Earth, but they return to the planet of the Pikmin in order to gather up all these treasures, um, and uh, and sell them. Uh, so. In this one, this is where we get a lot of the like objects that are human objects that would have been left yeah. behind after humanity. And so, uh, I mean, that's that's pretty much the main loop. You just instead of collecting ship parts, you go around and collect uh, valuable treasures so that you can pay off your company's debt. What was the most valuable treasure attainable? It was friendship, Fran. In pick. <sighs> Um, well, Louis is shit, so I don't think it's a that I, kind of friendship. I don't remember what the most valuable one is for sure, but I know the most difficult one is the one kilogram weight, which mm. you can only have a hundred Pikmin out at a time, but the one kilogram weight lot. takes a thousand Pikmin to carry. And so, what? So, do you- how do you move it? Well, friend, you use some of the new Pikmin from the Pikmin 2 game. Uh, In Pikmin 2, they added uh, three more kind of Pikmin, two more main uh, stick around kind of Pikmin. They added white Pikmin, which are tiny little albino looking boys. They've got little red beady eyes and they are uh, they are highly poisonous. Uh, oh. So their their primary purpose is to uh, fight things that release poison and then get eaten by monsters and kill them from the inside. So, uh, so they're the kamikaze of the <laughs> yeah they, uh, of the Pikmin. In fairness, they did make them look the most weird and scary, so that you don't feel bad about it. Feel too the, attached to the, them. Okay. The white Pikmin get the shortest straw for sure. It's, um, they were born in the wrong cast, I'm afraid. They were dying honorably, I guess. Yeah, sure. Uh, make them feel better. But then uh, there is also the purple Pikmin, which are oh. the chonky boys. <gasps> and are they the heavy lifters? They can lift as much as 10 regular Pikmin. <gasps> Amazing. So right? you have to get 100 oh of those guys together, which takes a fucking long time because... Uh, these Pikmin, white and purple, do not have their own onions. Instead, oh. they have these things called candy pop flowers that only grow underground. And if you throw a different kind of Pikmin into a purple flower, purple Pikmin shoot out. So, the just blood any gods, color Pikmin the blood gods demand sacrifice. Mm-hmm. 
not like you have to throw the blue and the red one in there to get a purple or anything like that. We're not dealing with color no. theory. That's no, ridiculous. if okay. it's a purple flower, if you throw Pikmin in, it shoot out purple Pikmin. How do the Pikmin feel about that? I don't uh, think. Cool with I it? don't think we need to worry about. Do what they keep the their consciousness as they turn into purple, or is it that's, like that's kind of their death and they're reborn? That's an awfully good question, but that does bring us to the third Pikmin type that is only in Pikmin Two. That also oh. is what the all the fans get all uppity about, which CJ was talking about. The bulb men. Yeah. See, uh, one of the most common types of enemies is called the bulb orb, and it's just this like weird looking monster thing at eat Pikmin, right? Okay. Uh, it's he. It's a big frog looking one. E- sort of looks like a frog it's a little like, it's, bit. It's red. It's got beady stalk eyes like a snail. Um, okay. and it's yeah, just they're, got, they're just, just kind of gross. Looking. It's just got two legs and no arms. It's just a big maw oh. that consumes yeah. Pikmin. Is it the one on the Super Smash Brothers map? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay, great. It just consumes. Okay. Uh, that's my frame of reference. It's the Pikmin's natural predator, and it's about a hundred times bigger than a Pikmin. Oh, it's big. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, it's again, it's like comparatively. Yeah, it's like a a yeah. quarter it's like the size of your hand. In yeah, but maybe. Yeah, I, yeah. I mean, he's he's a a big boy by comparison, but could probably fit in our hand. Oh, um, gross. But at any rate, uh, so the bulbmen you find deep in one of the caves are they are little bulbor babies, but they have Pikmin stalks growing out of their backs. And if you call to them, they will follow you and follow your commands just like any other Pikmin. And mm-hmm. in Olimar's little research notes on him, them later, he says, ah, I believe that these are a different species of Pikmin, a parasite species that get into the bulb orbs when they're babies and then take over their brains. <laughs> oh, <laughs> shit. <laughs> okay. That's wild. Also, so I'm, those ones... I'm reading that you can sacrifice the bulb orbs to make purple Pikmin which is a quote good choice as you can't bring them with you above ground anyway. So yes. you're just really so, min maxing, you know, like the ben the cost benefits of like, well, this creature is pathetic and I can't even carry it with me, so I'll sacrifice it and make yeah. purple boys. I mean, the Bulbmen okay. are technically like overall the best Pikmin because they're immune to everything, mm-hmm. except um, for daylight. Apparently, except yeah. for daylight, they can't go um, above ground. But yeah, it almost seems like that is the intended purpose of the candy pop bud is for the parasite ones to get into creatures and then convince the creatures to go into there and get convert their biomass converted into Pikmin's. Mm, That's weird. Interesting. Perhaps <laughs> the Pikmin are not as helpless in this scenario as we believe. But let's carry on for now and talk about all of that wacky stuff later. So Olimar and Louie get the prequisite 10,000 gold coins in order to pay off the debt, and they fly off back to the planet in order to tell the president, except Rutro, <laughs> Louie is such a little shit and also so forgettable that Olimar just straight up forgot to put him in the spaceship when they flew backwards. So Olimar- Oh gosh, is he gonna eat all the Pikmin? Olimar returns Olimar? to the planet, and tells the president, yo, uh, I got uh, I got all the treasure you needed. And they realize that Louis's not in the ship. And he's like, I guess we can go back and get him. There's more treasure there, right? And Almar's like, yeah, there's more treasure. And he's like, all right, I guess we can go back and get him. That's fine. Uh, and so the two of them return to the planet. Uh, and then this is kind of the like post game game but still the game kind of game where you just get more treasure you, you're not For like punsies. yeah yeah um and this is when they discover that louis has been uh trapped by some sort of creature known mm-hmm. as the titan dweevil uh and this creature is not only taken louis but has also hoarded a great deal of treasures uh, and hmm. and so thankfully the uh, uh, the purposes align both in trying to save Louis but also to uh, take all this treasure and uh, bring it back home. So 
Uh, they do that with the help of more Pikmin, as you might imagine. And uh, Louis is kind of snapped out of it. It would seem as though he was a uh, like in a trance or whatever while while you're fighting this creature. Um, and then they get the treasure, they get Louis, and all three of them fly back home with a vast amount of treasure that they'd never be able to spend in a lifetime. Hmm. And that's the end of Pikmin 2. Pikmin 3. The company is again in financial ruin as they have made a series of bad investments and <laughs> all of their treasure is gone again. Oh, they need a new CFO or something. Well, like, it's, this isn't, it seems to just be the working. three of them, and <laughs> one of them is the one Keeps who's eating their shipments. Yeah, one of them's an idiot. Uh, the other one is also an idiot, but is in charge. And then Olimar is not the smartest guy, but he's the one doing all the work. So, um, so classic, the, classic corporation. Olimar and Louie are sent back to PNF 404 in order to get more treasure because they ran out of money again. Um, and you're never going to believe it, but they crash land again. But we don't care about that, Fran, because we don't actually play as Olimar and Louie in this one. Instead, oh. we play as a new group from a different planet, which is kind of confusing, but bear with me here, all right? Um, Do they look like Olimar's people? Yes. <laughs> oh, okay. Yes, it turns out that all intelligent life in the universe, except for us, is roughly an inch tall. Yeah. You know, to be fair, we probably started like an inch tall. And I, then that's got a bigger. You're not sure, Fran. It's not true at all. <laughs> uh, <laughs> all right. So we move now to a new planet called Kopai. Uh, Kopai is, uh, I guess, similar in scope and makeup to, um, to cope like no, to tackle Hakatate. Yeah, Hakatate. Hakatate. <laughs> Can't remember that name. It's just, it's a dumb you name. You cannot for your <laughs> life of you. Listen, the Kopai people have their own issues. All right. Now we also financial. No, friend, existential. Oh. For oh. for you see, yeah. the, the Kopai people have had an explosion in population, and due to <laughs> due to quote unquote bad planning, they don't have nearly enough food to feed everybody. Yep. So, cool. So the Kopai the Kopaiites send out a ship called the SS Drake, which is meant to uh, go and retrieve a bunch of food for them. They just need food. Um, and so this one's not about treasure, it's about survival. Um, mm. They send out a bunch of probes to start, and one of the probes eventually gets to uh, PNF404 Earth. Earth and discovers that there's an abundance of both fruit and seeds, which are what they eat and use to grow food. So do they eat the Pikmin then? No, that, Fran, that, okay. would, that would be silly. They, I'm, just, I'm just waiting for someone to try and eat them. Louis definitely really ate Pikmin. Like Okay, Louis did. For, <laughs> right. for certain, he did, yes. He, he describes- That's messed up, he describes, Even the parasitic ones? Probably. He describes the Ooh. flavor of every single creature you meet Along Pikmin too, so even the one that like try like took him captive at the end. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. That's he's he's a, he's a he's a trying to take a he's a, a deviant friend. He's a he's a gourmand. Yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so the the Kopai the Kopaiites that's the that's their name. Kopites. The Kopites. Kopites? They send the SS Drake with three crew members aboard, Alf, Brittany, and Charlie. Um, Alf is the ship's engineer, Brittany is a botanist, and Charlie is the captain. And, mm. and these three are sent to follow up on one of their probes that landed on the Earth planet because they need to go retrieve a bunch of fruit that will sustain them and the the people on the planet as well as retrieve a plethora of seeds that they can use so i guess 
when they said that they had poor planning, it's hard to tell what they mean by that as far as why they don't have food, because they need seeds, which I guess meant that they just planted all of their seeds, but then I guess something bad happened, or they just didn't use any of the seeds from the planting to keep so more seeds. There's two thoughts that I have. One... It could have been like they don't have the Norwegian seed vault situation like we do of like sure. keeping seeds just in case, I... you know, <laughs> didn't think ahead there. Second thought is that all of their crops are kind of like the bananas where like every banana is exactly the same. Oh, you think there was a it's like All of their blight? crops are the same ones. Think... And so once one gets infected, they're all just decimated. No, Goddamn I... Cavendish bananas. I can tell you uh, what's happened with them. Oh. Um so ah. they uh they are requiring a new source of food because they are simply eating through their supplies so incredibly quickly uh as Alf will tell us in one of his journal things they do not produce um I think it's lectin it's the thing that tells you when you feel full so oh. those little bastards just eat food at such a rate that they uh, cannot sustain it. Awful. And so the reason that they're stoked to go to Earth is because they're like, holy shit, this apple's like 50 times my size. Yeah. We're just going to grow giant food and then be as like fucking greedy I and gluttonous as like we there's... want. Still gonna run out of food. No. This is not addressing the root of the problem. <laughs> I disagree. This is I just... disagree, Fran. I feel like if we could grow <laughs> apples the size of buildings, like we wouldn't have famine. You would just eat <laughs> we, some of okay, the big apple. On. There's literally so much food that we produce as humans that we could actually feed everybody, mm -hmm. but we don't. Right. So like I don't think producing giant crops is gonna make us feel a little more compassion for other humans and actually try and make sure everyone's Man, you fed. Sound so silly I don't think that's right gonna now. fix but, that. But problem. that's not that's not their problem, Farron. <laughs> their problem is just a sheer output thing. So if that was is if our though? if our problem was to are you are you saying that they do have enough food, just the waste of food is too great that I think they have enough food, but they just eat more than they need. <laughs> I don't I mean, think that, that, that might have been American tr portion sizes. <laughs> that might have been true at one point, but now they do do not have enough food. They well, they like, they went over the peak at that point. Right, they just, they've yeah. gone over the peak, and so now they're like, we're just ah, gonna shit. go to this planet. We're gonna schlorp up a bunch of fruit and such because they also uh they can only eat very specific things and metabolize them. So, mm. like they mentioned at one point, they're like. The, so we're going to go to a foreign planet and just assume which, that it's going to have food. Uh, their little well, scanner have things it, have yeah. found that it just so happens to be oh, okay. a planet that makes things that they can uh, digest because they're good, like, good. yeah, we, you know, talk to the Hakutates, but we can't uh, digest pick, pick carrots. So they literally mm. cannot help us with our famine problem. We oh, cannot eat rough. any of their food. They do. Yeah, they do know of each other, but they don't seem to like interact too much. They are, I mean, the fact that, so they say that they're like a couple solar systems away from each other, which seems to imply that one of them is like a colony maybe of the other one at some point, but they're somehow related, but they are different planets with different right. problems. So they send the SS Drake and uh-oh, as it's going towards Earth, something goes wrong again and ejects all three of the crew members and then crash lands somewhere. Uh, so the, th Amazing. the three crew members have to uh, group back up and they need to find the SS Drake again, um, which they do with the help of these strange little creatures native to the planet called Pikmin. Uh, they're because they're different. They're rediscovering the Pikmin, uh, like separate from Alamar, so they have their own takes on it. But um, does one try to eat all of them? A Pikmin? No. Yeah. No. Does one of the Hoka 
Nope, nope. Copites. Copites. There you go. Yeah. Does one of the copites pull a Louie and just try to eat everything? No. And keep no. a log of it? They're co- or? No, they're not little freaks. Also, <laughs> they only like fruit. And also, there's plenty of fruit because, again, they These are- said seeds. They come from seeds. They are the size of- Well, they're more like vegetables. So that's the thing is the mm. the uh, the other guys seem to only eat vegetables like- they their favorite foods are like uh, onions and carrots and stuff, but these guys only eat fruits. They fruits. all they I eat mean, are, all they eat are like apples and and limes and stuff. Yeah, I think the Hakatates also eat meat. If Louis is any yeah. example, or he's just a little <laughs> freak and he's the only one who does that. <laughs> He could be a little freak, but yeah. Speaking of speaking of trying to eat stuff, though, they do at one point. The Copites save Louie, and he, uh, in turn, eats all of their food supplies and runs away. Oh, he st- and he, st- wow. he steals. <laughs> why it do for we himself. keep him around? Yeah. So uh, he, uh, he why is, is the, he still here? Okay. He's the villain of the series. I yeah. told you. So back of all right. So we could, we could get rid of him. So all all three of them get together and find their ship, but the ship is missing a valuable piece of it. It's like a hyperspace drive that allows them to fly home. Um, that that's kind of helpful, yeah. And on top of this, they have received a distress signal coming from somewhere on the planet, uh, which, as we learn, is the distress signal sent out by Olimar and Louis, who have also crash landed on this planet. Um, so yeah, they do find Louis first, and Louis, because he's a little glutton, tries to steal all of the juice that you have been collecting, and just eat it for himself i guess mm-hmm. um but they find louis again they reclaim their juice and they like tie him up and put him in like jail i guess the brig <laughs> all right um and then they continue their search where they find olimar and fortunately for them olimar just so happened to have found the super space drive that allows them to fly home so over the course of the game, you're collecting as much fruit as you can, plus you need to find Louie and Olimar so that you can get your space piece to go back home. And you do all that. And similar to the other games, the ending of this game is based on how many fruits you can get. And if you get a lot of fruit, then it's like, uh, the problem is solved. Your people will never be hungry again. Uh, and if you don't get that much fruit, it's like, Maybe you have delayed the inevitable, but your people are probably going to starve eventually. Um, and then if you get all the fruit, it's like utopia, every, uh, free big apples for everybody. It's going to be great. Um, but that a little, is... A little weird. You you skipped over the part where Olimar is being held captive by a being from another dimension made of goo. Well, but... I, f- I figured you would want to talk about the extra dimensional <laughs> goo being. <laughs> Uh, see, friend, there's a a being who's made of extra dimensional goo. Oh, how do we know it's extra dimensional goo and not just like glue? Because uh, he's like phasing in and out of our dimension. He, your glue doesn't do that. No, that uh, would be bad. Isn't that the whole slime thing that people make? That would be bad glue if it phased out <laughs> of the. It's like every once in a while, it just comes undone. Um. Uh, so yeah, so the reason that Olimar wasn't able to keep up with Louis is that one of the native creatures uh took him captive. It seemed like it was trying to like protect him, like keep him keep him safe. Uh but it was it kept putting him to sleep, like not killing him, but just like kept him asleep and um and so the the crew of the SS Drake had to come and like destroy the creature in order to free him. Uh, after which he was like, "Oh yeah, I found your spaceship part, by the way." Um, oh. But there's a lot of creatures that uh, we haven't talked a lot about the enemies over the series, but that is pretty much the story all the way through. There, um, at the end of the at the end of the game after the 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 drake gets all their part and fruits they you know split ways with Olimar and uh and louis but there's some extra content in the deluxe edition that implies that at the after the game is over 
Um, Olimar collects enough treasure to buy back the SS Dolphin, uh, which was Aww. which was the intention of returning to this planet after the events of Pikmin Two. Is okay. I'm curious about um, Hokutai Hokutai's mm. Hokut, Hotu Kit. Yep, that one. Mm -hmm. Olimar's home planet. <laughs> um, economy because if they can just go elsewhere and get an influx of cash mm -hmm. and then it supposedly pays off their debts and stuff or like they can just buy stuff is that not causing a huge rift well it's, in their currency we, like we, value we don't know fran we're not like a space faring like we don't we don't we don't know what inter planetary commerce would even look yeah. like so no i mean i, I don't know yeah, no, it's it's the opposite of that, Fran. It's like when you are traveling across the sea and there's some new landmass over there and there's some like weird little native creatures on it or whatever, but you take all of their valuables and bring them back home, your economy is going to be booming. That's very ah. good. I mean, except like ah. when the Spanish did that and they brought back all that silver and then they ruined their own economy because silver <laughs> was not only the currency, but also the metal that makes their currency. So by getting a bunch of it, they've essentially inflated their own currency to... That's what I'm saying. Well, it's like when people are like, there's an asteroid out there that has 14 quadrillion dollars worth of gold on it. It's like, well, if you had it, it probably wouldn't be... Like, like yeah, much. you you first off, you're not generating fourteen quadrillion dollars, because <laughs> or unless unless you gatekeep it like the diamond industry. Yeah, you have lots of diamonds, right. but yeah. they're just like tripling I mean, them out and like keeping yeah, the value you, high. You absolutely, the Spanish were supposed to hold on to that silver in a big king's vault, not just uh, yeah, but throw they it all over. The it place. Out. Yeah, they kept doing but, wars and stuff, and like right paying the, and armies. The and other that. point is that it is also three guys uh, with a tiny company who are doing this, not a. It Spanish sounds like armada. they're getting a lot of money though. Well, we don't really know what ten thousand. I mean, it can buy a spaceship apparently. Yeah, but that's like not like. Elon Musk Elon Musk buys a spaceship. He's not rich, <laughs> so whatever. <laughs> um, but yeah, that that's where the game kind of ends off. I believe in Pikmin Four. You are playing as Olimar once more. Uh, oh, oh, you're not. No, no, well, he's, no. He's in it, Ooh. isn't he? Yes, you would. You might think that if you played the demo, CJ, but you only play as Olimar in the demo, and then oh. after that. You play as unnamed rookie because oh. we're in the age where you need to be able to customize every character. You yeah, play <gasps> that's cosmetics unnecessary. I don't like that. Uh, Love it. Well, that that all I wanted. That is the that is the story as presented in Pikmin. But now is the time when we blow your mind. What's the weird shit? Yeah, now's the time, friend, where we blow your mind with all this dumb shit going on because... I mean, you already got one guy just eating everything. Yeah, so he's awful. Eat. He's just bad. He's bad news. Um, but the Pikmin themselves might also be bad news, friend, maybe. <gasps> uh, so the first, the first hint that we get that stuff is dark and scary Weird. in the background, um, first off, it's Earth. The Pikmin planet is Earth after some sort of catastrophe because there's no more humans mm -hmm. and everything's all kind of abandoned. Uh, another hint is that one of the spaceship parts that you get in the first game is called the Geiger counter, which is weird because that's mm. a guy's name and not like, it's weird that they called yeah. it a Geiger counter too. <laughs> uh, yeah. But it is a Geiger counter and does do what a Geiger counter does in our world, which is detect radiation. Mm -hmm. uh Olimar says that he doesn't know w what it's doing really like in his log of the part he's like this is the geiger counter it's supposed to detect something but i never read the manual so i don't actually know what it's doing but it's been going off crazy ever since i landed on this planet oh. um, so the implication is that some sort of nuclear war has happened on earth which has killed off all the humans and some maybe not all of them some form of the fallout caused a bunch of these creatures to be created okay. because presumably pikmin don't exist now presumably uh well i've never seen one 
Uh, but they definitely seem to exist in some sort of Earth future. So uh, that's that's our first uh, first tick. This this is our Adventure Time esque tie in spoilers. I guess if you don't know the plot of Adventure Time, but side note, I would love to hear that at some point. That would be it's, that that's would a be whole thing. That's a whole thing. That would be a lot. But there's. I don't know. It got pretty complicated towards the end after Penn Ward left. Uh, either way, uh, Pikmin, <laughs> Pikmin Land is post-apocalyptic Earth. Mind-shattering revelation number one, even though, again, you pretty much mm -hmm. they pretty much tell you that in the first game. And uh, if anyone tries to tell you that it's only a theory, then they don't understand subtext. So the Pikmin are... Okay, Here, here's what... Well, I don't know how... I I don't know how like established this is, but this is this is what I get. So the Pikmin exist, right? Like they have to be able to survive on their own because they yeah. they exist in the world. Obviously, yeah. I I think what happens is people like if you lose all of your Pikmin in the first game, then you game over because you don't have any more Pikmin. Um, and so it uh, does. You the don't you don't game over. Um. So what, happen what happens in every game is that the if you lose all of the Pikmin on a day, the day automatically ends, and then the next day the onion will shoot out a single seed, just like oh, it did really? the first time you start. Oh, okay. Hmm. Then that that's even less, because when you lose that way, it's called Pikmin Extinction, uh, mm -hmm. which the impl people, I think, see that, so they're like, well, the implication is Olimar has all the Pikmin. So like no, but I, it's just like your Pikmin are gone is the yeah, is yeah. what happens. So I don't think Olimar is the only thing keeping the Pikmin alive. He couldn't be because they already existed. That's such a that's such a like white settler th way to look at it. <laughs> where it's like oh well, if we didn't come and harvest these things for our own benefit, then they would have died out. It's like they were already there. So whatever's mm -hmm. going on there, Olimar is not necessary in that process. But we do know that the Pikmin will just like follow him blindly. So something about the Pikmin makes it so that when you when you pluck them or like when you raise them or whatever, they will just imprint on you. So we know that that's kind of how Pikmin how Pikmin live, which is furthered by the Bulbmen, which are again are Pikmin that they uh, the Bulbmen just kind of like emulate the regular Bulboids. So there's like the the not mind controlled ones. They still are like chilling around, hanging with them. Uh, it, it's kind of like they just decide to hop in there. Well, once sometimes once they I, the <laughs> start controlling the them. idea is they just kind of imprint on a regular Bulboid, and then once they grow to full size and stop being a child, because they are a little smaller than the than the regular they're, yeah pikmin size yeah they're pikmin sized instead of the the big monster size so the idea is once they grow to full size then they'll go and you know like kill them slevs inside of the inside of the big purple flowers so that's okay. why there's no adult versions of those or like big ones because you know so the pikmin <laughs> is is like a race of imprinters that just like exists to it's like toxoplasmosis but you know you know the thing that's in cat poop that makes you like ah, cats yeah. more and then the and then the mice get it and then the mice are like oh that's just a cat that's fine and then the cats are like cool these mice don't even care that i'm a cat i'm going to eat them now like that's the whole thing with that is it's toxoplasmosis that's and, insane and you have it, Ethan, and I have it, and Fran probably has it. Pretty much everyone has it at this point. It's just a thing that exists inside of humans now. Uh, and it's, it's, it's whatever, but it exists to make mice less afraid of cats. So there's a science fact for you. Neat. That's I, nice to know that if aliens come to the planet long after we're gone... They are likely to imprint on whatever remains of cats. Also, yeah, I mean, they just the, do that. Cats have been worshipped as gods. Yeah, because of because of that, probably because of toxoplasmosis. <laughs> there you of go. Of course. Um, that's why the Egyptians loved cats. So the Pikmin are like they gotta be, just that's just how they exist, right? Is they like 
get uh, they they just emulate other creatures or each other until they get old enough to just like repeat the cycle because they know they're just probably disorganized i would say that's the one thing Almar brings is like a very focused organization he's like really trying to get these pikmin to reproduce and do things for him so they probably just have some sort of natural version of that that they do without intervention but because of their biology they're very susceptible to some alien guy showing up breeding a bunch of them and then you know collecting them all into a little army and telling them exactly what to do even if it's not in their best interest although again <laughs> some of them exist to be eaten to i guess save yeah. the other ones i don't know are they like drone worker bees that are like yeah i'll die for the colony whatever man put get me in there coach it's got to be something <laughs> like that that's my best guess with the pikmin oh we didn't talk about the newer ones that are in pikmin 3 uh, there's there's, uh, there's two more oh uh, well, so the parasitic ones went away, you said, from Pikmin 2. We Yeah, we did not see Boldman in any future games. Well, um, we kept the purple and the albino ones. Uh, Yeah, so they're not primarily playable in Pikmin 3. You can do them in, like, a challenge mode, but then they are also back in Pikmin 4. Mm. Okay. Um, there's also the, but, there's the rock Pikmin, which <laughs> he's, he's a rock, Fran. With a little, <laughs> with, with an antenna, with on a it? little sprout yeah. on his head, yeah. Yep. Aw, um, that's cute. He he heavy. You throw him at stuff and it hurts. Throw them. him at stuff. Yeah. yeah, you throw him at like glass and break it. You yeah. throw rocks. Um, and then there's also the uh the pink Pikmin. Uh, yeah, the flying ones. They yeah they have little fairy wings or I guess mm. just like insect wings. They can fly. Uh, they cool. they're. They're they reach up high. Yeah, they're Olimar's up B in Smash. <laughs> the most notable thing that they do, they they up B in Smash. Um, I mean, they can fly around and pick stuff up, and you can get them on top of things. But uh, that's all the Pikmin, uh, and they uh, in in three in three. There's up to the, three. There's two more in four, but I won't spoil that because they're fun game mechanics. Go discover for yourself or watch a let's player. I don't know. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, there are there are also the mushroom men in game one, but I don't know if those really count as like their own species. Uh, it's the, like when the <laughs> the wiki says they are not a separate type of Pikmin, but rather the result of exposing any Pikmin to a puff stool spore cloud. Exactly. Is a, a big mushroom enemy can turn Pikmin against you, and yeah, they interesting. And instead. then you have to slay them, and they Aww. they yeah their their mushroom is replaced or their their flower is replaced with a mushroom cap, and then they have sad eyes now instead of oh. round eyes. Oh. Uh. Oh my. Yeah, but you know. Is that is that where fan theories are all like this is how Toadstool Kingdom was made or anything like that? Yeah, this is actually <laughs> the the Mushroom Kingdom is actually very small. That's why it's mm -hmm. called that. That's why yeah. mushrooms are so big. That that big, fat, gross mushroom that shoot the spores on the Pikmin, that's Princess Toadstool. Oh my mm. god, that is a I have listen, I have watched all of the <laughs> all of the game theories, and I know that there is a video where he's like, is Princess Toadstool actually just a hive mind of mushrooms? And listen, yeah. They are. We know that <laughs> because of the Super Mario 1993 movie where they say that. Yes. That we've gone over. That yes. we went over in a previous episode. Go watch that if you wow. haven't. Or watch it again. I don't know, man. But that's that's the deal with Pikmin. They're little they're little parasites, but also they're little friends. And I don't think they're good or evil. It's just like they're just It's existed. nature, baby. I don't think they got thoughts in their head. I don't know why they have eyeballs or little legs and arms. Sometimes things just have those things. Or ears. I mean, if anything, they're probably insects. Some sort of insect plant hybrid because they have Cuz why not? They have little wings. They have eyeballs. Maybe they're complex eyeballs. Uh, the ones on the the um flying pikmin do look more like that, yeah. Yeah, they do. They got um, but all right, all right. So CJ's got his uh, CJ. I'm gonna blow your fucking mind with my new game theory here. Okay. If you could please just 
take the entire game theory opening and put it in the middle here. I think Matt Pat would be fine with that. Well, it's uh, most, I mean, unless you're on YouTube, it's an audio medium. It does, yeah, no, it, it would be it would be kind of boring, but get the music in there. Okay, great. Uh, it's, <laughs> it's not in here. I probably maybe I put in something royalty free. I don't know <laughs> if I feel like it okay. later. All right. So let's put together a few Pikmin facts to start. Mm -hmm. Uh, so the Pikmin series has this very weird relationship to time. Um. They do this whole thing where uh, in Pikmin's 2 and 4, we have pick the caves that we can go into, right? So you, not, you don't only explore outs the outside world, you can explore underground in the caves. And okay. when you go into the caves, time no longer passes on the world above. And also when we go into the caves, they are very weird because some of them look like caves you know they just dirt rock places and some of them are like a child's playroom or a big factory that's floating in the void uh what? they are just these weird like little slices of time that you can take your pikmin through that uh seems concerning uh, just it's, i mean they're dungeons with, with a more focused it's it's, it's pretty it's yeah. pretty weird and they talk about it every time about how they're like Mm, it seems like time does not pass underground. Uh, and so, or like when you go underground, time does not pass above ground. Um, the Pikmin series is also one that gets, uh, it gets rebooted many a time. Uh, in Pikmin 1, Olimar first meets the Pikmin and establishes how they work. In the DS game, Hey Pikmin... Olimar first meets the Pikmin and establishes how they work. And in Pikmin 4 again now, Olimar has uh, again first met the Pikmin and established how they work. And it's like, it's different every time. These are not like things that are occurring at the same time. They, these are different events that happen each time. But the biggest weird thing is that when in Pikmin 3... Uh, we have the Copites scanning over our PNF 404, right? Mm -hmm. We get to see the entirety of the planet, and it has one gigantic uh, continent on it that is an exact copy of Pangaea Ultima, which is what scientists expect our world will look like in 200 million years. Uh -huh. So we have a some strong evidence that the planet is 200 million years in the future, but also oh. there are like Duracell batteries and freshly baked cookies just like lying around. Uh, on top of this, with our extra dimensional beings who are uh, only to like able to even be damaged in this world by like specific types of Pikmin. Uh, it seems that whatever kind of um, catastrophic event that the world went through, it has uh, not only made it hostile to human life, but it has, like, untethered the world from time. It is in the wibbly-wobbly time space. But here's... That part is, like, that's kind of just a mishmash of several other theories that are already out there. Yeah, but what, here, what is it, Professor? That is the innovative breakthrough. In, the innov in, the in innovative. In my thesis, I will say the innovative breakthrough. Breakthrough. This thesis right here, CJ. Uh huh. Uh, so the Pikmin are little bipedal dudes, right? Yes. Uh, uh -huh. they're they're little adorable dudes who have a penchant for following the commands of others. They pull in biomass and they make more of them, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but the onions are, they're their own thing. And they seem to be um, like, they're super well designed. They have these very specific things of like, they will uh, only allow a certain number of Pikmin to be put out in a day. They have like specific interfaces for creatures like Olimar to pull Pikmin out. Uh, they save mass so that they can 
shoot out a single Pikmin if somehow you were to lose too many of them. Uh-huh. Uh, they are, like, part of the Pikmin species, but they're also, like, a very... They're far more advanced than the Pikmin, who are kind of just, like, dopey little dudes, right? Sure. Okay. Um, on the On the other side, we, as CJ said, we didn't talk a lot about the monsters in this game, but the monsters in this game can be, like, roughly... Uh, put into like two different categories. There are monsters that are basically like evolutions of creatures we have today. You know, there are like there are a lot of bugs that look very similar to bugs we have today. There's a thingy. There's thingies that are not quite frogs, but they're basically frogs, right? Uh, and then we have the things that are like monster monsters. You mm-hmm. know, they don't really have a one to one corollary. And virtually all of those monster monsters are also bipedal creatures, which is really a weird trait. Like, that's a very rare trait in nature. It's basically us and birds who are, like, full-on bipedal. Uh Uh-huh. What we have here, our final thing, as CJ said about Pikmin 1... In the bad ending for Pikmin 1, you put Pik- you put Olimar into the onion, and mm-hmm. he pops out as a little half Pikmin dude, right? Now, for the series up until now, that's the only part of it that we've had, and that's also the non-canon ending, so that's been whatever, right? Oh. But Pikmin 4 has solidified and is a major part of the game that if you put intelligent beings into the onion, they will pop out as half Pikmin dudes called leaflings. Oh. Oh. Great. Is that a reversible process? Uh, It is a reversible process because that's how, you know, video games work. Sure. But uh, it is something that would just stay that way unless you specifically had a weird little science character that you saved who would help you out with it. Makes sense. So, CJ, the yeah. theory is this. <laughs> okay. Soylent Pikmin is people. You the th- Pikmin, okay. the ah. Pikmin have uh, are the <laughs> descendants of humans who, looking for some way to survive on their ruined planet, uh, created these onion things that are like you know, super, uh, they're super intelligent, super good at, like, protecting Pikmin life. And so they went through the same process that Olimar went through. They go through the onion and they come out as creatures that can survive on this irradiated planet, the leaflings. And then just over generations, they have gone less and less leaflings and become more and more uh, just Pikmin, like little Pikmin creatures. They get smaller and smaller to protect their, to the, it is easier to protect the creatures. And the whole Pikmin series is basically just uh, like highly influenced by H.G. Wells' story of the time machine. Mm-hmm. We have the Pikmin are the uh the little the eloi right the small childlike humans who live happy and carefree during the day but at night they have to worry about the mutated humans who feast upon them and we have our one single uh explorer in the story it is the the operator of the time machine in our games it is olimar who comes and using the help of the carefree creatures is able to retrieve his vessel and escape from the dangerous creatures of the night and the post-apocalyptic world first off ethan you know i can't read second second of all (laughs) uh that doesn't hold water my friend because that means at some point Humans would have had to invent a device that made them smaller. And if you bring up to a person who's five six that they're five six, they get mad at you. So <laughs> there's there's no way that a group of scientists making a device that would make you shorter and then be like, to survive, you have to be a short king. And then, and there's no way humanity I, would be like, yeah, that's a uh, good idea. I want to survive. They'd be like, no, I, bro, I'd rather be dead. 
I do think humanity would naturally get smaller because yeah, as... no. CJ CJ is saying this because he's six and a half feet tall. <laughs> well, somebody's ancestors had food. That's that's pretty good. the uh, The spacecraft in question, the Dolphin, does have a part called the Kronos reactor, which would presumably oh, allow cool. one to travel through. Well, it does let you travel through space and time, which do coexist as you know different axes on the plane of of being mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. you know what uh, i'll say myth plausible <laughs> i guess i and then what about the wobbly space cre like the space time creatures are those just the humans that didn't do that yeah. i guess yeah so i i think like all of these other like bipedal creatures that are around are just the humans who didn't get turned into Pikmin mm. and instead just became mutant monsters. Beings of consciousness. The, right. The the Morlocks dwelling in the caves. Wow. Hmm. Uh, do you want to hear my theory I came up with, which is uh, a shorter, but also uh, just less consequential i feel like if i said no it would be rude that's true um (laughs) so we talked about the geiger counter as one of the parts on the dolphin ship um i looked through all the parts to see if there was anything like worthwhile Uh, a lot of the parts are just like different motors and stuff uh there is a there is a part that neutralizes all of the harmful exhaust from your engine because I guess on Olimar's planet, uh, pollution is banned. So they're doing pretty well there. Um, but Banned pollution. But the most important thing that I saw was there are two items in the original game that uh, when you look at them, are items that Olimar's children gave to him as little tokens of, as just like presents for their pop pop. Uh, And they're called Sagittarius and Libra. And they're just like little green domes, uh, but they don't look like anything specifically, but apparently they were just gifts that his kids gave him. But we know that the Hopites, uh, the Copites, say that PNF-404 is something like 20,000 light years away from from their home planet. But they also mm-hmm. say that Olimar's home planet is only a couple solar systems away. So in the grand okay. scheme, Olimar's planet and Earth are like tens of thousands of light years apart, right? Yeah. And as we know, Sagittarius and Libra are Earth constellations that were invented by Earthlings because when they look up at the night sky from where Earth is, they see stars in a certain orientation that they've given names to called the constellations. And then your zodiac, or not your zodiac, but your your star sign is just where the sun was in the sky when you were born. Which means yeah. that Olimar, Olimar's kids gave him a gift Sagittarius and Libra, which are, which he says are their signs. But that means Mm. that even though they're in a completely different place in space, like probably a different, like, galaxy, the distance is so far away, that they also have the star sign Sagittarius and Libra, which means independently, two (laughs) separate intelligent... (laughs) Two separate intelligent species decided that a really good name for a constellation was just two fucking scales. And they're like, <laughs> yeah, that's oh, oh, yeah, that's one of the most important things in the sky is the scale one. Gotta have Top that 12. one. No matter where you are in the entire universe, they come up with a scale <laughs> constellation. So that that's my theory. Convergent scale constellation theory. <laughs> For some reason, people feel the fucking need to make that a, a, an important part of astronomy, no matter where they are. And there you go. Fran, do you have a fan theory that you want to do? I don't. I don't. You don't want to talk about how, like, the rock Pikmin, like, what's their deal? Are they, what, are they rocks or plants? Are they, are they, <laughs> what, what, are they rocks or are they Pikmin? Uh, people, people seem 
to uh, have the misconception that Olimar is like an engineer or something because one of the parts on the ship, Olimar was like, I really like this part, mostly because I designed it. Uh, but it's the nose cone. It doesn't do anything. Yeah, yeah. It just looks like it's aesthetic, he says. Yeah. So uh, he's not. He's just a guy. He's just a guy who loves adventure. <laughs> he's just a guy. And loves his family. But not enough to like hang around with them too much. <laughs> is Louis like Olimar's like brother in law or something that he has to just stay in business with for the good nope. family relations or some nonsense? I don't know. Why, why keep him? Yeah, I don't know point. why they didn't fire Louis or why he's in it's... prison, really. I uh, mean, just, this, yeah. Uh... He eats the inventory. <laughs> they do seem to live in some sort of like utopian society where their like, biggest concern is do we have enough golden carrots? And even if they don't, like. It's not a big deal, but, uh, you know. I mean, it can't be that utopian if they still have loan sharks. <laughs> I, <laughs> hey, you gotta make Unless a living somehow. CJ's yeah. revealing something about himself. He's like, no, I think that's perfect. Listen, I think I don't care. It's a capitalist I don't, utopia. I don't care if people go into the office or not. I just think that they should because it gives their companies more control over what they get to do <laughs> during mm. half of their lives. And I don't like the concept of letting them be around their family too much because then they might realize that they <laughs> don't want to spend a bunch of time working and they actually do want to spend more time at home with their loved ones. And I don't like the ripple effects that that could create. I just don't want to <laughs> think about how much money we would lose is the problem. That think about the bad. carrots. Think about the golden pick pick fruits and think about this. The episode is over, which is oh. kind of which is kind of sad, but it, it also means that you made it to the end of another episode of the Lord. You know, and we want to thank you guys for for hanging in there with us, for giving us a chance to talk about the grave seriousness of uh, t dropping two nuclear bombs on a foreign country, and then coming back <laughs> and talking about. Uh, just so just a little guy. He's just a little guy, and, and a lot of other little guys. He's just uh, yeah, and you know a lot of people will paint Olimar out to be uh, a cruel man, uh, and you know maybe we could all use some more compassion. But at the end of the day, if your plant dies at because you watered it too much or whatever. You know, it's not the worst thing that's ever happened. So if your Pikmin die because they all you, got eaten, you put them in the water. because you threw them, you threw a hundred of them into the maw of a great beast to try and kill it. You know, S shit happens, dude. Don't beat yourself yeah, up about it. Just happen, you know. Don't beat yourself up about it. Uh, we want to thank Gailstorm Kitsune for doing our channel artwork, and we want to thank Apajo for the intro and outro to the episode. And. That's it, man. Uh, we're on Twitter, X, whatever the fuck. Uh, I don't really, <laughs> I don't really check it anymore. I'm on Blue Sky now. If you've got a Blue Sky account, check out Cooking with Spices. Um, oh, no, we got, we got the Cooking with Spices on we, Blue Sky. Yeah, there's only like a half a million people on there. So if you are somehow <laughs> a person on Blue Sky and listening to this, that's like. That's like, that's like some sort of DM? that's like some sort of Holy crazy. Shit. There's no DMs on Blue Sky. That's like some sort oh, of crazy uh, coincidence. I'm not on a Blue Sky. Uh, but uh, but yeah, definitely check out our Twitch channel, Twitch slash Cooking with Spices, because we uh, stream games over there sometime. Uh, I'm thinking Metal Gear Solid Two is coming up coming up soon, so you're gonna want to check that out. And uh, I don't know, check out Ethan's channel. Uh, he he has a video up there. It certainly is going to be another one, right? <laughs> give, yeah, <laughs> give it, give it time. Uh, give me or give us money, and then I'll make, then I'll make a lot more videos. How, how are they to do that? Like, are you just asking uh, the government? I think you got yeah, PayPal, got Venmo. I, I think for right now we'll do Venmo, but once you start Ooh. giving us money, then we'll do a Patreon or whatever. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, give me money. This is a disaster. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, I gotta think of something to end with. 
Uh, I feel like I just gave you really good, just you know, plug for money. We can't just ask for money. We're not panhandlers, <laughs> Ethan. We're proud. We're proud. Um, we're proud podcasters. Okay. okay. We don't do All it. Right. We don't do it for we're the. Not we don't do it for the money, Ethan. We do it because we love content and we love making content about little men little men who do whatever you say like give us money but you have to <laughs> but but you have to build you have to cultivate that group ethan like a like a little like a like a family like a family but like a family a where farm. they just give you money <laughs> for nothing in return I feel like you could probably just cut out like somewhere in the middle of that. I've been CJ. I've been Ethan. And I've been Fran. And ask your parents for some money. And, you know, if they don't give it to you, then they just don't love you that much. And that's a hard pill to swallow, but you gotta figure that out one day.